Uh, well, now it's time for public forum. Uh, Mayor and Council welcome comments from the public on agenda items only in the public forum. Ask you your name, address, and agenda item you were uh, referring to on the agenda, and please keep your comments concise. A little bit five minutes. Uh, this is your standing up the clock is right up there, so you can see it on the uh, right about printing on the right. So. David Gilbert, 1715 Gilcrest Drive. Item number six and number seven. Uh, I strongly support the appointment of this person to the uh, police department. At this time, I'd also like to thank Chief Lashbrook and his men and women that serve our city very well. I will talk more about this in our listening post tonight. Uh, number seven. Uh, we are not a town of high-rise buildings, but we do have some. And in my opinion, like a refurbished ladder truck might be sufficient for Mason City. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Anybody else have a form? Digging through this, trying to figure out what's going on, uh, I believe that you received the final recommendation for planning and zoning. Is that correct? That's the question. The other question is this agreement that you signed with Harley Davidson and their representatives, I'd like to know the exact date of that signature. And that takes me to the powers and duties of zoning. So I, I went to your own website and dug this out. And 2-5 uh, two dash, two dash powers and duties of zoning. And I went down to the letter C and it says, before presenting any recommendation to the city council, the commission shall, with due diligence, prepare a preliminary report and hold a public hearing, therefore, before submitting its final recommendation to city council. And here's where I think it's pretty important. The city council shall not hold its public hearings or take action until it has received the final recommendation from the city planning and zoning commission. And I think this is where there's a problem for me. Uh, I know mistakes are made. I can accept mistakes are made. However, if you want to really look at this close, 
is this agreement that you signed even valid? That's another question I have. And that's why I've been objecting, because I, I want to get some answers. And I've avoided going to a lawyer, because I don't want to make a big deal out of this and, and create tons of problems for the city. I just request that you give me some good answers, and we'll see what happens. That's pretty much it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the mayor personally for talking to me before the meeting, because I was kind of fired up and I kind of calmed down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, this is the uh, this post the Mesa City City Council. And anybody has an opportunity to uh, speak on uh, five minutes to do so, please state your name, address, and uh, you'll have five minutes. Box right up there in front of you and on the right. David Gilbert, 1715 Hillcrest Drive. You know, thank you is only two words, and it's not a, net, a lot of letters, but it means so much. And I, to you people on the council, I don't know. All I can say is thank you. It is just an honorable council that a citizen can count on and trust. I, it's just fantastic. Thank you. Another person I'd like to thank, and that's Chief Lashbrook and his men and women that serve under him. Recently, or it's escalating a little bit. Uh, we have deaths, drugs, uh, sex crimes, battles, robbery, and he needs all the support and all the equipment that the city can offer him. And I too want to say thank you to Chief Lashbrook and his men and women. Thank you. Hi, Ms. Gilbert. Sandra Cervantes, 1213 6th Street Southwest. Um, you know, you hear a lot of times that in this town there isn't a lot of things for kids to do. Well, I, for one, have to fight for my grandchildren with the other grandparents. But weekend after weekend and during the week, there are a lot of things in this town to do for kids. And the one that um, stands out with me is when Boogie went to his uh, grandpa that lives in Plymouth and said, um, we don't even need tickets to go to the movies at East Park. You know, I mean, we went to all of them. They've enjoyed them. It's, and it brings back um, kind of a history thing for me to go through the drive. It's kind of like going back to the drive-in. And they even have the old-fashioned drive-in commercials. You know, take the speakers off your windows and that kind of thing. But like doing the thing in the park with the police officers, it makes my grandchildren realize that police officers are good people. Because sometimes you always hear the negative things. Well, to be able to go out and talk to them and look at the patrol cars and stuff like that gives them a different perspective. And then to, um, like, the barbecue bash, to have things there for the kids that are affordable. And that's the big thing, is when you have these things, when you, I mean, I only have a couple kids, grandkids, but some of these people have four and five kids. And when you start charging a lot of money for these things, it makes it more difficult for those that have larger families. But I, for one, want to say that there is a lot to do for these kids out here. You just have to be willing to be able to take the time and have the time to do it. And I appreciate all the work that you've, that all these different organizations have put in. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Rook Cops again, representing my mother, a Ruby Cops, I'm in South Washington. Well, I'm somewhat disappointed, I understand. I'm just, I want to get some clarification so that I'm never put in this position again thinking there may be really something wrong and you won't be in this position again somebody questioning how the city operates. Uh, I, I read the duties and it's pretty straightforward. But uh, another observation, I mean, I haven't been at all these meetings because I didn't know they were going on. My mother doesn't get the papers she can barely read. So maybe the city needs to look at how, how you notify people, register letters or something. I don't know. That's up to you to, to uh, decide. But I look at, you went into this agreement with Harley Davidson. You were under the gun because 
they were getting pressure to move out. I understand all that. And you did some quick work to keep them here. The planning and zoning, according to their own rules, are supposed to do this final before you do anything. Have a public meeting, enter into an agreement. So I want you to just consider what's happened. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't appear to be right. And I'd like to thank you for your time. I'm going to go get some legal opinions. But I'm not here to cause any trouble. I just want to make sure things are right for the city so you're never in this position again. And no one other has to come up and ask this question. I thank you for your time. I'd like to thank the mayor, Mr. Trout, even though I don't know how good friends we are, and uh, particularly the staff. The staff at City Hall has been so helpful. They never bat an eye. They treat you right. And that's worth a lot. So your staff's doing their job. I ask for information they provide. No questions asked. So there's good things happening here too. You got a great staff, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is interesting that last week, Mr. Tornquist and Ms. Marinas, I happened to be at the PNZ public hearing for this new zoning thing. However, as the people who were there last week can I testify to, there's a very definite reason why the chairman is who he is. And just as the mayor did tonight, he saw me start to get up with the public forum and he goes, gone. So that's how John Garner came to the public hearing. There was a great deal of distraction last week. This is not the first time that Mr. Coop has had to come from out of town. I can recall years ago being at a PNC meeting when this same issue about that alley. Because I can recall when he made the statement, I used to have to shovel the alley. As for the remarks that Mr. Tornquist and Ms. Marinas, I did go, but last Tuesday night, the uh, PNC directly stated that they wanted you to have all three meetings. Um, two of the members, and they, there's a great deal of difficulty, it's not uncommon for them not to be able to have form, which is on the issue of sidewalks that Mr. Tornquist is promoting. And as we saw last week, we just postponed the issue because of who's there. Um, as these people state, a great many people have no idea when these meetings are going on. For example, I was in the bottom of City Hall, and some people came in, they looked at the water department doors, and they go, oh, it's closed. And I said, well, are you here for a meeting? I said, um, Mercy Hospital or, or PNC, that will be on the second floor. And if you're here for the park board, that will be downstairs. Now, most people would have notices posted on the doors and on the elevator and, and something to mark. Because a great many people, even Dr. Lala, on the night that he wanted something for his son, he was going to go to the third floor. And I said, well, I think you'll find that there's nobody on the third floor. It'll be in the second floor. The most of the majority of people don't have the time and they don't get, and they, as he said, your notification process is ridiculous. Um, you know, if his mother lives on this and you're going to vacate an alley that, I don't know, maybe when he was young he used the alley to park a car, there should have been some kind of notification. He's obviously coming a long distance to. Last week they said, oh, well, you can talk about all of these things. Well, what he doesn't know is there's only going to be one public hearing. That will be September 4th. The other two, he has to get up and know that he has to talk at the public forum. And if you get going, going, gone, you're, that's the end of it. Um, 
These are the same issues the zoning code, this is a book from the Mason City Public Library. She writes a series on quilts, but based on what I'm sure that she had, she has some very interesting comments about zoning and about people that profit from it. Just as the nepotism that's been so familiar with the Sioux City government, we all know that the best qualified person to enact a new zoning didn't happen to be the sister of a former person who used to run the zoning adjustment. And that's what I was talking about. As for the matter that was before those people last week, I happened to be at a garage sale and across from it was the very person that wanted this variance after the fact. Variances in conditional use permits are before you do the thing. And they have to be for a good reason. An exceptional property is not a little fire ring that can easily be moved. Um, my grandparents were inundated and my mother because we have a garage that's built on the side street instead of an alley. I don't know how many times we had city officials come out. We had false petitions. We are legally built at the time it was built in the 1940s. That five foot setback has been in existence since the 1940s. There's a good reason for it. Um, anybody that wants, you know, Mr. Hickey and, and uh, one or the other, we're so concerned about this guy because somebody made a comment about the situation out in Arizona. What I overheard the guy talking with his neighbor and about what this council person was going to do, <laughs> Mr. Hickey was concerned the only thing that guy would have done is take you to court. What went on a year ago Thank you for your time. We appreciate the comments. Anybody else? Ms. Brody. Twitter Brody, 1459 9th Street Southeast. I have a request. We have young people, kids, we live up in Minneapolis and we go up there quite often, come back and visit them. Come in on the interstate, come down on 122, come into Mason City. Uh, one time we came in from vacation at 2.30 in the morning and came in on 122, got to Menard's Corner, which is Green Southern Drive. That corner, 2.30 in the morning. There is not a car around at all. We hit a red light. The light sequenced through every corner. We sat there, waited for the light. Chief waited for it to turn green like we're supposed to. Went to the next one, which is tapped. Hit a red light. Guess what? Not a car around. We sat through the whole thing. Went to the next one. Sarah Gord away. Guess what? Same thing. Sorry, Coke, or Chief, I ran that one. That was three. That's two thirty. Now there are literally, not figuratively, but literally, no cars around. We were in a couple weeks ago. We came back uh, early in the evening, about eleven o'clock. There were about eight or ten cars that we did the same exact thing. I thought maybe it was because there was just one car there at two thirty in the morning. This whole batch, the same thing. We hit all three lights. Can someone please look at that? Uh, my wife tells me that she travels in the morning from the east side to the west side and runs into the same thing. So it's, it's some reason, in the daytime maybe I can understand the lights, but at 2.30 in the morning do they really need to stop you at every single light? Thank you. <laughs> 